Hello and welcome to the Metal Cell. This is Richie. I'm delighted to say I've been joined by Howard from Partland. How are you, Howard? How are we doing, Richie? Nice to be here. Yeah, delighted that you're here. Welcome. Oh, that's great. Lovely location. It's yeah. Here in Richie's renovated house. Renovated and the sun, the sun is shining. The sun as is well, shining. Right? Beautiful day. Love it. Cool. Um, I'm just back from the siege. Um, I was disappointed to see you weren't on the lineup, um, considering you did a fantastic job the last time. Um, what's your own opinion on the siege? Do you enjoy it? I enjoy it. I've enjoyed the siege from, from day one. When there was a smaller operation running out of, uh, what was the name? Baker's Place. Ah, okay. So you have two stages. Initially, it was one stage upstairs, but it kind of developed into two stages. There was one upstairs and one downstairs. Then there was one in UL for a while. Then it developed into what it is today, which is um, amazing. Did you play as Five Will Die for... We did. We did. Okay. I'd like to say that we were the first headliners, but we weren't. We were we were second headliner, so I think it was Genova. Okay, so there would have been yeah, Genova. Yeah, yeah, there would have yeah, been Genova, eight, yeah. eight, or eight to ten bands playing at the time. Right. Which was like the prototype Siege of Limerick to see how it went. Yeah. It was a bank holiday this Sunday. Started from there, started small. Look at it now. Yeah. Unreal. What did you, were you happy with your performance last year? I'm never happy. Aren't <laughs> you? In terms no. of performance, no. Um, I think I think I had a touch of flu that gig actually, okay. which was quite impacting on the performance but it, it's you know you, you do what you can do yeah we were on quite early in the day which i enjoyed because yeah. it just kind of frees you up to enjoy the rest of the bands mm. it's, it's quite a big thing it's a difficult thing to play to si- play the siege with part alone not so much the magna pina but with part alone is a bit more difficult yeah um, because it's it's the reason being is that it's, you can kind of get diluted amongst everything there's right. so much going on there's so much for everybody i prefer myself yeah from it for part alone to be playing with two or three bands who are in the same sort of atmosphere. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, did I think I think he did uh, debut uh, a live song. We did, yeah, yeah. Um, How's that going? That's, that's called a, the Heaps in the Hollows was the song that we that we played at that time. Um, we're close to, to getting something out of that song still. Yeah, that song is still developing as we speak. Cool. We played oh, really, it last yeah. weekend actually in Galway or the weekend before. Sorry. Um, and there was a slightly mutated version of what we played at the siege, yeah. so it's still developing. We're very close. We're looking at we we look we're looking for thirty nine minutes of music for the next release. Right. Okay. And we're about seven minutes shy of that at the moment. Okay. But what I noticed about that new song, I was just watching uh, Keen more so on the guitar. There's some beautiful, yeah, lovely pieces yeah. in that song. Chick- just... Chicken Fanny O'Callaghan, we got. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's got a touch. He's he's just a he's a splendid guitarist. He know? is, yeah. I mean, but it was just the way it dovetailed with your guitar as well. It, it, it like I left there thinking, going fucking hell, that's a great song, you know. Um, so it's interesting. Oh, you you can kind of develop it a bit more. You reckon there's a bit definitely. Of leeway. There's always always room to develop, especially with 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 the the length of our songs. We're quite long. You know? Yeah, I think the shortest song we have is five and a half minutes or okay. something. So when you're when you're doing something over a space of nine to twelve minutes. It just cries out for bits and pieces here and there, and mm-hmm. it gives the likes of Kean, yeah, the platform to experiment and have fun. You could with. see it. You could see it. Yeah, yeah and a lot of stuff. Is, a lot of stuff is on the fly, which is kind of cool. Which yeah, is, which is what I think we're all about. Right. Okay. Is, uh, pushing ourselves out there and making things uncomfortable. So uh, going back to the siege performance, um, it was a really uncomfortable day. Uh, we were looking after the the hundred year old man lads as well from right. the previous night and the following night again. And we've been sessioning quite hard for that week. Okay. Yeah. So the performance of the siege kind of became secondary to what yeah. was going on around us. And it was difficult to connect to that, yeah, I have to I, admit. But, but I think know. as a front man, you know, there was always a great um, description of James Hetfield insofar as he plays his guitar like a drum kit. I always associate you with that as well. <laughs> but like you've this big shit eating <laughs> smile on your face as well. Like it's, <laughs> you know, so you'd never think that you were sick or you were in pain or anything like that you know no and, and it's it's rare to to have a part long cake where something isn't going on in the background it's it's just that kind of band where you re- you really need 100 percent focus yeah and um, uh, for me to get something enjoyable out of part long that that needs to be the case so going back to your 2016 release uh follow me through body um magnus Lindbergh. yeah the cult of luna guy yeah um are you going to work with him again i hope so um he's a very very cordial guy uh, what happened was is we had been to Roadburn that year, myself and the drummer Alan, mm-hmm. and uh, we kind of gone there with the intention of seeing Neurosis and Cultaluna. They were both doing two sets, or sorry, no, Cultaluna were doing the Salvation in its entirety. Right. So 
we were just watching it gobsmacked like you know yeah. absolutely gobsmacked and uh, the drummer Magnus Lindbergh I don't know he he produced the Cult of Luna albums and we were just like this sounds ridiculous you know and and they just sounded the best of all the bands over that weekend mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah. and um, they had a kind of a Q&A afterwards where they, they spoke about the recording of Salvation and he had a lot of really insightful stuff to say All right. so I was like fuck we gotta go how do, how do we get through to this guy and start working with him yeah so uh, we sent him sent him the demo and we asked him would he be interested in doing it and he jumped on board he said yeah he said look get your stuff done he gave us the specs of what he would require right okay and we did a good back and forth uh, very happy with it I'd love to work with him again we worked with him again on All We Are the, the single mm. but Nah, maybe three in a row is too much. Maybe, maybe we should try something else yeah. this time. You know? And did did you have to travel over to him, or did he come? To no, no. So it's all done over 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 correspondence on the internet. It's amazing. Um, it? M Prod, I think, is what he calls his company. Um, but we all our communication was done through email and through Facebook messages and things like that. Right. But uh, it was nice because we're fanboys, you know, and it was, yeah. it was a nice, uh, you know. I'm sure he takes whatever he's get paid for. Yeah. But I'm also sure that he's not just going to master any old shite, you know. No. <laughs> so how did you, um, again, it's just like something for something for myself that um, like, so you would have done everything um, with Pro Tools, uh, no? Or no. What, what, uh, what so, did you use? So he, we, what we would have done is, is we went up to Last Light Recordings in Temple Bar. Right. Okay. So it's the old... Um, Temple Bar recording studios. You'd like to the Pogues, U2. Okay. Uh, there's machines there that David Bowie would have used to record his right. stuff. It's a bit of a museum as well. So. Okay. So we were there for, for three days with Shawnee Cads. He's um he's part of Unyielding Love. And he was in a few cork bands in the early days, but he moved up to Dublin, he's on sound engineering. And uh he's really creating this sort of Steve Albini type vibe up there, which is really cool. Yeah. So a lot of bands are going through them, through okay. him. Yeah. And a lot of bands are coming out sounding really, really good. So we kind of decided to be part of that. We recorded it as authentic as possible. Right. Um, the drums were done to a click track. We put all the stuff down on top of it. Um, the vocals were done very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't too interested in, in things sounding too polished or anything like that. Right. Just wanted to sound like an honest representation of the music that we were yeah. trying to portray. And thankfully, I think Sean, he got it immediately as to what we were trying to do. It was... Not so much relying on technology to push us over the line. Right. Okay. Really wanted to kind of rely on what we could produce ourselves. Right. Which is a, a bit of a lost art these days, I think. I think a lot of new bands are trying to sound so clean and so precise. Remove that drum click. Remove that fret buzz. Remove yeah, this. There is a there is a trend, isn't there? It is a trend, and and you got It's got to sound like a guy playing guitar. It's got to sound like somebody's doing something. Yeah. You know, as opposed to somebody doing something and having cleaned up. To present to somebody else right. makes more sense to me. So you had a budget then for three days. Is it up there? Budget for three days, and in the middle of those three days, I played a gig with the Magnapina in Dublin. <laughs> and, um, multitasking, multitasking. As usual. Uh, I remember I got promoted at work that week, and I hadn't told him that I was going to record an album the next weekend. <laughs> so my first day on the new job, I was missing. Like <laughs> I was frantically texting, "Oh, I'm very sick this morning." <laughs> Brilliant. But uh, it proved to be the right, the right choice, I think. So he finished it then and sent it on then to... Yeah, Mag- so we would have... Magnus would have required certain specs. Okay. So he he, he would have then taken it away and mastered it specifically for, for the digital master, mm. specifically for a vinyl master. So we actually have vinyl masters for the, wow, for the release. We, just, yeah. we haven't gone down that road with it's it yet. It's an expensive business, of It's an expensive well. business. Um, but the, the CD sold out within 18 months, which is great. Mm. Um, yeah. So... I mean, we must have done something right. You know? yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it's just um, what I'm asking is just obviously you've got um, a few songs um, readying at the oh, yeah. moment. Yeah. Uh, and I was yeah. kind of wondering, would you use him again or what's the current idea? Or, or what, Did I pick up uh, something on Facebook there that, that one of you was over in Sweden? Oh, this in no, this was Magna Pina, I would imagine. Uh, we, oh, was it? Yeah, we put a lot of uh, f- fake propaganda up there. To, you know, <laughs> to when we were in the Tokyo, fool people, yeah, uh, up in the mountain in Switzerland, <laughs> recording with a goat. You know, it's <laughs> it's, it's a different uh, fake. It's, it's it's like spreading fake news. You know, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> he put stuff it. out there, and we see Brilliant. what comes back, and that's a perfect example. Richie, thanks. <laughs> 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 makes me so happy to hear that. <laughs> 
There you have it. I'm just going to switch <laughs> off now. <laughs> so going back then to uh, the split single with Suits there, mm. um, Pavel. Pavel is involved in it. He is Absolute a legend. legend. Yeah. Um, I have nothing but love for Pavel. Yeah. He's uh, an incredible guy. Um, he's just, he epitomizes everything that's that's right about a, per, a human being. He's just, mm. and I can't say enough good things about the likes okay. of Pavel. Okay. He's, now, was that song um, a leftover from... It was. So it was part of the sessions for Follow Me Through Body. Um, right, okay. It wasn't as developed as it had become. Okay. Um, it was a song that we recorded up there, but it didn't. It just didn't seem to, to fit, fit in into the, the, other ones, yeah. the team or the, the the level of quality of the other ones. Right, so okay. it was a case that we needed to take that away and develop it a little bit more. Okay. Um, we had a big lineup change. So two left and two came in. And we were saying, right, we've got the template of this song to work with the new guys Mm -hmm. to make them part of what's going on and um it was a sort of a bridge into what we're doing now okay so it was basically giving the bones over for somebody to put a bit of meat in it yeah and uh that's what came out of that recording session it's not representative in any way shape or form of where we're at no it's it really is that's why i asked yeah it's, it's still, floating in the middle yeah it really is okay. it's, it's not even a bridge you know it's okay kind of its own existence outside yeah. of everything else at the moment it was um well received though yeah i mean we were happy with it it was it was a good experience for us all to kind of get to know each other and to get to know each other's styles and know each mm -hmm. other's uh preferences and how we worked yeah i mean I, w previously part alone came from a lot of conflict we writing a song was just a nightmare you know okay take a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of arguing a lot of so of, you all had to share the yeah we had to sh it was it was a more of a case of um the personnel that we had in the bands at the time and i love them all the bits but they they all had their own issues going on right. outside of the band and it was really starting to bleed in okay and uh it really needed a change at that point because yeah. there was a lot of conflict a lot of fighting a lot yeah. of um struggle okay i saw, listen it, it might come true in the music of that uh, um album as well you, you know? you'd hope so but it doesn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just makes producing that a uh, bit of work a lot yeah a lot more difficult i think a lot of young people go through through life looking for angst or looking for problems or looking for something to give out about and i think that's where things like teenage angst is born out of mm. just not being happy yeah with your lot and as you get older you kind of realize that yeah when real problems come real problems really are yeah at a different level Yes. And you're looking for something to give out about. I think that's where we were at at that moment in time. Mm. So by moving on, we still have our, our our very authentic kind of delivery or whatever you want to call it or everybody's their own personal approach to things. Mm. But it doesn't boil over, you right. know. Yeah. It's not boiling over on top of each other anymore. We're just there making music, which is yeah. great. Well, you know? I mean, and, and crucially, you've a happy, settled group now, yeah and yeah. that's it and mm. and it's, it's, it's a sort of a professional ethic of coming in we have a job to do mm. you know we all understand how important this is to each one of us yeah so let's deliver it in a way that it's important that is yeah. the most important thing for us at this moment of time is this not what happened at home yeah. or not what's going on in your personal yeah. life this is what we're focusing on you know it's funny there um the way you're going with that um is there a is there a set we'll say have you a set time or a set idea of how far you can bring part along? I do. <laughs> I have a very definite set of uh, of, of uh, ambition, uh, collective ambition to do something with the band that um, hopefully will come to fruition. I have a good feeling that it will. Um, you know, I have a, we have a realistic ambition with part alone. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff I'd love to discuss, but I really can't. Okay, and, that's and, fair and enough. In, yeah, yeah. In, in time, hopefully, that I'll be It'll able become to sing it from the rafters. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're developing towards something quite big and we're hoping that things work out. If things go according to plan, then, then we'll be having a different yeah, conversation sure this time next year. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. And it's we are all waiting to see which way uh, this can develop. Um, kind of my own opinion, witchy, and, and I just love the soundscapes you, you kind of form and create. Um, I'm wondering, did you, would you have ever considered our... Or maybe you have, I don't know. Um, have you ever thought about adding synth? Yeah, um, and you'll see a lot of that on the new recording. Okay, um, that's, that's well, interesting. <laughs> the, new, the new stuff is actually proving to be quite difficult to replicate live. So we're having a few, I wouldn't say issues, but a bit of problem solving around that. Um, when it comes to the time to record, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of different sounds on there right, that okay. haven't heard before. And synthesizer is definitely something that... Uh, would contribute to the atmosphere yeah. but um but live then you could get a fifth member 
yeah, we see we're always looking to to kind of um, bring someone on board in that regard. But at the same time, yeah, you'd have to fit the spec. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's not easy to get five, four or five guys no, no, in the room course, together no. to with a collective goal. You know, yeah. we're lucky to have four. Mm. But I mean, maybe you can just um, like I mean. People won't judge you if you have um, a backing track of a synth and stuff like that. You know, I, mean, I judge myself. <laughs> I, I know, and I fucking hate it myself. Don't get me wrong, but you know, sometimes if if it adds to the sound, the whole experience live, which is what which you, which is what you come across so well live. Um, if there's a backing synth in the background, man, just you know. Yeah, I, I suppose our our solution to that problem so far has been to to really just pair it back to its bare bones, and we've the, the last gig we played. You play three new songs. Right. Oh, that was in Galway, was in it? In Galway, yeah, Friday a week ago in Sally Long's. How was, uh, well, how was that actually? In it's great. Uh, just, I went to college in Galway in the early noughties and uh, it was a real throwback yeah. to old haunts. I used to live in Sally Long's three, yeah. three four nights a week and uh, just to go back in there and play again. Yeah. Ten years after I'd played there previously, it was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, same really smells. Nostalgic. Yeah, same smell, <laughs> same staff, same, you know, a few same punters and yeah <laughs> just something's never changed like but that's great i loved i love that yeah. like you know yeah there's a great scene up there in fairness all the gang that are up yeah. in Galway, they travel and, and a lot the tent they, on slug they, lasno for example or yeah. you know great great for coming down to cork for gigs and they do you know. i mean and and i can name a few more um that aren't in bands they're the they're the same guys that are going to hellfest they're the same guys you meet in dublin yeah. they'll come down to cork they'll go to the siege you know um they're really actually I, I am doing a podcast up in Galway in May. Sweet. Yeah, I'm and gonna do uh, a Hellfest um special and um hopefully get ten ton slug on board Sweet. as well, you know. Lovely lads. Yeah. Great yeah. lads. Yeah. Um yeah, Sean and Ronan. Great yeah. guys. Yeah, it's gonna be weird because I'm gonna have to talk to him professionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really, you know. <laughs> Should have used to it now. Yeah, David. exactly. Yeah. Um, but you, you debuted three, three new three songs. Three new songs, yeah. Right. And okay. uh, just getting back to the, the soundscape stuff because a lot of the stuff really is kind of going in that direction, I guess. Yeah. Just, we're introducing new things. But the solution to that problem when you're playing live, or, I guess, is to just be as primitive as possible and just give it as an honest replication of what you can do, yeah. what you have. Mm -hmm. And let the gaps fill themselves in you yeah know? it's not a case of giving somebody a perfect listening experience it's just a basically getting people to feel what we're feeling at that moment in time yeah it's quite a difficult thing it's to it, do yeah it's a hard thing to replicate isn't mm. it um especially if you drifted uh if you drift from a studio into a live situation um with new songs i mean they are your babies and you are given a crowd of i suppose they are drunk a crowd of drunken <laughs> lads um your new song and you're kind of wondering about reactions and stuff yeah and, and the it, thing is, is it's uh, a difficult kind of one to gauge and i think you introduced it at that actually at the gig um i think i said this is a new song not that anyone gives a fuck you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean who, who who genuinely did give a fuck nobody of course they didn't you know yeah. they just want to be entertained yeah and uh, um but look you know fans of, of your band and there is plenty as well will kind of like as i said for that new song um in the siege for me i was just going oh yeah yeah brilliant yeah you know? i guess that's the purpose so of it is to get people excited you know you won't miss miss on it um kind of uh lyrical themes are, what way are you investigating in, in the new songs can you go that way yeah. i mean with with follow me through body it was a sort of collective of of personal opinions i guess is the way to put it um Paraclone is sort of a a loose kind of um vague figure for us to represent ourselves through yeah it's more of a protective barrier to our own personal ideals right as opposed to a kind of literal thing mm -hmm. so Pertlone is a sort of metaphor i guess is the best way i could put it right, i mean okay. uh, things we sing about lyrically myself i write the lyrics and it's 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 all personal it's i'm only representing myself okay you know it's completely open to interpretation yeah but the idea of Pertlone is just it's it was the second wave of settlement in ireland mm. And it's just getting into that mindset of making mistakes. You know, you're right. going to make mistakes. Yeah. But what choice do you have? Yeah. You know, you've got to kind of climb mountains and, yeah. you know, conquer the Formorans and mm. so all this it, kind of stuff. So are you going to get, is there a bit of Celtic uh, mythicism? A mythicism? little bit, a little bit. Um, it's more my own personal take on it. My, yeah, it's my personal take on it. And, and, and I use a lot of the, the ancient Celtic traditions, I suppose, to, to sort of present it to people because mm. it's easy for people to understand 
yeah. you go back to school and you're told stories about the salmon and knowledge and so on mm. it's instantly relatable and you kind of understand what that person's on about but then when you dig into it it's a bigger meaning yes what actually happened okay and i think with Bertland, that's what it is it's a case of trying to present ourselves in a way that can be understood yeah you know but at the other side of it, not caring if we're understood or not you know? i'm glad you brought that up how are you going to represent that um art wise have you any ideas i do yeah so yeah i do i've got yeah. plenty i've got pl- <laughs> plenty of ideas um nothing I've, I've, yeah i've whittled down to about four or five different ideas okay um it's really just to get that last seven minutes of music to to fill in the gap right and, okay. and then decide where the artwork will go with it okay um so is it um it's it, I, that's what i like about about you as a person as well with your art um and uh, you you remind me of colin Oh, the Zohar oh, Zohar, as yeah, well. Colin, yeah, Colin Bulger. Yeah, um, very passionate about his music, very passionate about his art. And with your band, um, obviously, the, like when you're creating music, um, is it always at the back of your mind? Can you see imagery or is there images forming in relation to what you could actually represent the music with? Or is there yeah. or is there lyrics coming through as well? Like. I mean, there's a lot yeah. going on in your head, I'd there, imagine. There is, and it's it's quite a quite a difficult thing to do. Um, there's one song in particular, uh, "To the Stars," that uh, it's a, it really does mean a lot to me in terms of what's been said, and 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 I understand that that's not going to hit everybody in the same way it hits myself. But yeah, it, even at practice, I struggle to, <laughs> I suppose, connect to it because I don't want the yeah. Um, so I don't think we've actually played that practice in the last four or five months because it really does take without being too pretentious or too artistic it really does take a lot out of you to to revisit those things but like yeah. you said i do i get imagery flashing through my brain as to what i'm singing about and you get brought back to that moment or those moments okay. or that experience and it can be quite difficult so I, as you said you see me smiling a lot on the stage yeah, it's and uh, like grimacing <laughs> it's more of a kind of a nihilistic acceptance that this does, <laughs> just just doesn't fucking matter at the end yeah, of the day yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. i'm just going to enjoy this you know, a brief moment of 25 to 35 minutes yeah. where you're performing and having yeah. fun, you know? Um, but I, that's that's why I want to, I'll just drag you back to the question again with the new stuff. Um, what what was, uh, what were you kind of, like, are you writing the music and is the images coming through or are the lyrics coming through with the new stuff? They're all over, all over. They're all in their own spaces, I guess. So okay. I'm doing all three, I guess. Is, is Which, the way to see, it. That's, that's it, yeah. At I the mean, same time. And, and it's kind of a unique situation you're in, yeah. in in that way, like, you know. It is, and it's, it's just even things like titles, just even things like uh, repeating a lyric. Is, is that too much of that one lyric? Is this... Does that be will that be represented by the imagery that I'm trying to produce behind it? And it your it does. My brain just goes from one point to the other very, very quickly. Yeah. And it's hard to pull it back to focus on on the one task at a time. And of course uh, as well. But like, I love it after that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's great to be able to um have a physical copy of something that you were part it. of, you know. And I think the the way things are ramping up at this new one that it is, it's 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 going to be quite a unique thing. But it I think it's going to require us to take quite a bit of time so i would i would be looking at nine months from now maybe there'll be something tangible to present to people right okay but having said that if i say nine months it means 12 you know it's just the way things go um we are under pressure to get something out by christmas and and, and mm. hopefully that pressure will produce the best out of us yeah. rather than kind of overwhelm yeah the, the process i'll throw this to you then um what if um, a record label came in in the meantime um how would you respond to something like that we'll say for example the way zealot cult were picked up there mm. by blood harvest um which is great yeah i mean they really they really gave them f- uh, huge freedom in, in what they wanted to do you know they des- they deserve that because i mean they've they're they're a real example of guys who started out and just kept going and haven't gone away and they're just mm. still going, still going, and they're getting their just rewards for it. Yeah, it's and, great and again, see. they're out a long time as well. They are, and they're being in different bands. They've been involved in the early Limerick community, metal community. Yeah, and it's it's great to see them get their just rewards. But come back to Bertlund, if if, if something like that was presented to us, I don't know. It's very easy to say that you do one thing or another. I don't know. I mean, it would mm. depend on, on how that was presented and, and the context of it. But likely, I would probably say no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just it's just the way I operate. But just juxtapose suppose that if it was Magna Pina, I'd say yes. Okay. You know, it's yeah, just two different two things. different entities, two yeah. different things. I think it's about respecting what we do, and mm. I think that 
the only way that what we'll do will be completely respected is if we control it ourselves yeah you know? and and that <laughs> is the, the the great question um you know you like there is a lot of interest in you i'd imagine in europe um in the uk as well um i certainly read a lot of great reviews of your album um from people in europe as well you yeah know? and i think that's we i think that's where the demographic for what we do is 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 in Europe, and and, and it certainly is reflected in sales and it's and our Bandcamp sales and Bandcamp that da- Bandcamp data. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of people in Germany, Holland, Belgium, mm. that kind of trilogy there. Yeah, it seems to be where most of our stuff is heading out to. And is social media helping helping you that way? It is. Um, social media. It's a double edged sword. It is like, a double edged you know? sword. I fucking hate it, and. But at the same time, I'm completely addicted to it. Like you know, I can't can't deny that. It just it's but it it does dilute things and it gives a false sense of something. Mm. Um, a like on a photograph means nothing. It just means yeah. fucking nothing. You know. Yeah. Um, I'd wager that a, a lot of people who are fans of our social media page have never even seen us live, or you know. Okay, uh, probably they have. It's a, yeah. I would hope so, but yeah. I I'm really cynical when it comes to, to social media. It doesn't make me right, but I I am not on board with it at all i really dislike it so know? let 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 me, let me put it to you this way then i mean how do you feel about being an irish band first of all you know yeah um i think it it's it's great in in its own way it makes me sad when you do go abroad and you see how things are set up and you see the support that like local arts councils will have for this kind of thing or if you're going for an interview for a job, that this is part of your experience, that this is part mm. of something that's valuable to the company that's yeah. hiring you, is that I play in a band and yeah. this is what we do. Whereas in Ireland, it's a case of you can't really, it, it's not really... It's a great point, you're right. It's kind of taken it and kind of gone, all right, you're one of those lunatics who shouts and screams and, and is into drugs and, you know... Yeah. It's a stereotypical kind of uh, cliched... I, I think you'll it. get that in the UK as well. I'm sure fair. you do. I'm sure to you do. I, maybe it's because the demographic is bigger. There's more yeah. people in Europe that it's 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 got its own space that it's it's perfectly okay to be living in. Um, so I do get sad being Irish when you see how well bands are looked after, but right, okay, and you see how invested promoters are in it, invest how invested venues are in providing a space for these bands to perform in. Whereas in Ireland, it's, it just seems to be kind of a consistent struggle to get something, con- you know cohesive and uh reliable together mm. you know we we had the print shop which was fantastic and it was the closest thing we had to what i would consider a european type venue right okay where it's byob the the emphasis is on paying the bands making sure they're okay mm. and giving the people who come in yeah the best experience for the least amount of money that you can yeah. give them which is great you know yeah uh, look there's there's probably uh pros and cons um I mean, I think the Cork scene at the moment is very interesting. Um, I think you've got the right people working now. It's a perfect storm at the moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, it's it's uh, it's, it's another reason why I'm doing this as well. You know, I've been there two or three times with different kind of scenes, and um, I just said, "Fuck it, it's about time." Got up my ass and try and promote and help as as much as I can as well. Um, it's great. And I mean, I was only was only talking to to the last from Magda Pina uh, two nights ago, I think it was, and we were talking about like yourself, Richie, and like Mark and so on, and uh, you just just seen things kind of bookend a little bit. Mm. So you've got all these kids coming through from the likes of God alone, yeah, right up to the likes of yourselves, and it's yeah. the first time that I've seen it in tw- twenty two, twenty three years of playing gigs now, yeah, that you have that sweep of a demographic. You've got kids sixteen, seventeen. Right up to the lads who are yes, I won't say what age. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but they're kind of you know, and everybody's starting to dip their toe in a little bit. Yeah, and there's so a bit of it's, there's everyone's a bit of a represented, community. which is great. There's a bit of a community starting, isn't there? There is, and it's it's a hard thing to get a community going for for a sustained period of time. You get blocks of a year here and a year yeah, there, and exactly, two years yeah. here and two years there, and it'll dive yeah. off to plan it for another year. You yeah, know? it's just the way it is. It's a organic thing. It, really it is, or, yeah, it is organic. It's a good point, and as well as that. It, it's just the fact that like you 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 have a ba- an album now you're working on it uh crows the lads have an album as mm. well you know there's a lot of there's a lot of bands coming through now again that can f- self-finance and i'd say the budgets uh must be a nightmare but they're doing it um again our chaos i had nothing but respect for them lads mm. they went about it themselves you know um so 
there's a I think there's a good sense of community coming through, but again, how long will it last? That's it, and it's 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 a difficult thing to put people under pressure for. Mm. So I understand, uh, I mean, and especially with promoters. I mean, the next gig could be their last, and that's yeah. just the reality of it. Is you could have ten good gigs in a row where you've got a sold out house, and then mm. you've got that one gig on a Wednesday night where nobody shows up and you lose your bollocks. Yeah, and that's it. They're done. Yeah, you know. Um, again, just just from your own point of view, how are you finding the balance between uh, work, life, music, <laughs> relationship? You know, very, very difficult. It's yeah. Uh, there's so much. I mean, I'm I'm not an idle person at all, really. Yeah. To be honest, I'm constantly doing something. Yeah. Um, I'm involved in a lot. Uh, never really full on. Um, I involved in the Pyre guys at the beginning. Mm. Um, the Paranoid Beast. Um, I did my toe and every now and again. Yeah. Um, my own gigs. I'll put my own gig on here and there. Yeah. Playing gigs, recording, practicing. Yeah. It's at least four nights a week for me. Really, that's a that's a big commitment. That that's weekly. Yeah. Month of the year, Jesus. You know? Okay. And uh, it's something I wouldn't be doing if I didn't love it. But it is quite difficult to balance it with personal lives yeah. and, and with your work life balance yeah. and all that. Because you, you will see bands that are will just fall apart. Um the crew to now again. It's another yeah, band. It's just a good example of it being in the crew. Yeah, it was sad to see them have to pack it in. But the thing is is when you be start becoming start you know, you go through life and things happen, you've kids, you lose a job, yeah. the recession hits, uh some lad breaks his leg or some yeah. dad is having problems you know it's just just life mm. you're very very unlikely to get four to five guys go through a 10 year period with no hiccup you know yeah um the other thing no it's it's just interesting there again and i and i keep going back to your sound um and i will say god alone um had a gig there recently where there was projectors used and stuff mm. have you thought about something like that yeah i mean we've been through the whole spectrum of that at this point yeah um I don't mean any disrespect to the God alone. No, no, but when, I, when I see that kind of thing, I, I laugh. It's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, kind yeah. of going like, yeah, you're doing it now, but I guarantee in a month from now, Pain you'll be like, fuck this, I'm not setting this shit up. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> it's mad. Isn't it? And you see like things like pedal boards um, evolve and devolve, you know, yeah. so watching the God alone lesson, uh, I forget the name of the guy, not Jack, now the other guitarist, he's got quite Gee. a lot of pedals. And, um, yeah. You're kind of going, yeah, that's not going to last. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you brought it up now. Um, what about your own equipment? What do you use? Very minimal. Very um, minimal. I've got two JCM. I've got JCM 900 Marshall and JCM 800. Um, the JCM 800 is a modified 83 model, the Plexi one. Yeah. Um, they're quite rare. And it's just a beast of a beast of a sound. Uh, plugging in, I've got tuning pedal, a delay pedal, and I've got a distortion, an overdrive pedal. Right. That's it. And uh, you were on about the strings... Strings like ropes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I use a tiny uh, six millimeter <laughs> plick, uh, which is just pl the plectrum is one of the weakest plectrums you could possibly get. <laughs> and I use gauge thirteen um, uh, Dario strings, and I break them weekly. It's just ridiculous. I have a problem. Uh. Um, my approach to playing guitar is like going into a hurling game or something. <laughs> it's just shot up you and see. I told like you, man. You play it like a drum kit. It's the highest praise I can give you. But it, it wears on the equipment so quickly. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Gigs-wise, um, anything coming through um, that you can it, tell us? In terms of part alone, we do have, um, I think it's June the 27th or something like that, with uh, Paranoid Beast in the, in the Freds. So it's a new endeavor that uh, Mark has put forward. Right, which cool. is sort of a session upstairs in Fred's and it, the, the first one went, re went really well with God Alone um, the next one is my other band The Magna Pina will be playing okay. next Saturday and then oh that's with Zahora that's w is no, it with Zahora no Red Sun Alert and Damage Grows ah um, so Zardoff. that should be a good one and then okay. after that part alone we'll be playing in May um, in Fred's as the third part of that and then August we have a few spattering of gigs coming up right um, are they um, all local are they abroad there, there, there's a possibility of, of uh, an abroad gig in August or 8 but right. it'll be one okay. off it won't, okay. be, it won't be a tour it'll just be yeah, one yeah. gig um, then the following Christmas and hopefully having the album out then, yeah. then we're, we're ramping things up yeah to you'll a, be ramping it up nice to a different level hopefully would you play Roadburn or something like that if you were offered if, if I was offered I would cut off my left uh. ball <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that yeah I'd, um, yeah I mean look we we have our we have our goals we have our our, yeah. our glass ceiling as you want to call it yeah. That. Yeah. and uh, if things go well then then like I said hopefully I'll be back here a year from now 
mm. we'd be having a total different conversation yeah Do you know? cool that's that's the hope and, and dream but um it's, it's it's good to see the likes of um zahora uh zealot called now the u.s tour a mini u.s Fantastic. tour tent on tent on slug as well yeah doing, doing what they're doing it's uh, just great you know so like i mean people are people are taking notice of the irish scene it's a bit frustrating that that there's not that there's not more even record labels i know it's a, it's no it's a, it's kind of a, a bad word to say now at this stage but i'm sure and you said it um there's european uh record labels out there doing the right thing mm. and you know it's a pity they can't actually kind of have a look in in ireland and and, and kind of find it bands is. you know it's we kind of do things backwards here compared to what the, what what i've seen on the continent and and they tend to they know it's a business for one mm-hmm. so and did they understand that the correlating record sales from the type of music that we would do yeah is not very reliable it's poor dependency yeah. you know it's not a massively popular type of thing to do and you know it's it's kind of a quality rather than quantity kind of thing yeah but um they focus a lot on shows they focus a lot on creating that environment for people to perform mm. and to get paid and looked after for doing that yeah you know so it's a case of bands really do need it's not like you can just get a band together go down Fred's and play a gig it's yeah. a case of right we've a band together now now we need to be good enough to go to this venue and present ourselves yeah. as something that they can be yeah they can rely on people coming in to see yeah. whereas here it's a case of right let's just go play a gig we haven't jammed but fuck it let's play a gig or you know, mm. let's record a demo or it, it, it kind of gets kind of backwards yeah I, I think um, again bands that tour that will break out of the Irish scene have a better chance of getting picking up something you know more substantial you know that um that kind of they can use for their own i suppose benefit you know later on down the line you know yeah and like like i said we do tend to tend to have the wrong sort of approach here and I, again this is just my opinion it doesn't make me right or it doesn't make me wrong but but for example like i made a mistake myself of playing just far too many gigs in a year or putting on far too many gigs in a year and then what it does is just saturates things and gets people weary of the same old shite over and over again yeah you know we're lucky now in car because we've got whatever it is 20 25 bands who are constantly rotating and it, it's yes th- yeah it's great it's, that's not yeah. always going to be there yeah. you know it's a case of bands presenting something mm-hmm. that you can go fuck me out got to catch up with this yeah. or i got to get online to see who this is or i got to go to a gig to see who's producing this sound yeah it's a case of lads go to the organize a gig hope people will show up mm. and repeat the process next week and the following week and the following week yeah. it's just it's just stagnates yeah whereas you should play your gig focus on presenting something the next gig mm-hmm. so the next gig is different than the last one you've got something to offer people or whatever it may yeah. be yeah and just keep it kind of ramping up and that sort of trajectory yeah. as opposed to gig 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 yeah. we can't afford to record what the fuck yes no. yeah yeah that's true doesn't make any sense yeah I'm sure there's plenty of bands that you, that fell into that yeah and I think the difference on the continent it is, is you get really good quality recordings and a presentation of something mm. that intrigues you before you go seek it out you yeah know? it's interesting the way, way it, it's interesting the way it could go it can go either way at this yeah, stage can't it I think it, it can you know um, um yeah. I ju- you there's know, hope the, there anyway. For, there is hope. <laughs> for the first know? time in a long time, there's and a bit certainly, of hope. Um, and like, I mean, again, Zahora live, um, saw him in Bloodstock. I mean, they won over a whole tent of people. Yeah, I you mean, know, Colin is great. You know, sure. fantastic live performance. It's just, you know, it's so memorable. And people then will start, it will generate a buzz about them and how they present themselves on the stage, as you mm. said. Like, you don't want. Irish bands going abroad and falling around the stage drunk just that, kind of going and that's it you know it's a fucking it's, disaster you know and that's probably 90% of what's kind you of know? happened before you know and I've done it myself I mean yeah totally I think I fell asleep on stage in London once you know okay so <laughs> drunk you know what I mean so yeah. drinking absinthe and red bull in a test tube before we went on stage and yeah uh, you know I was well, not a good idea I was in London playing yeah. a fucking gig it should be yeah. you know yeah but you learn, you learn from that. You learn from that uh, process and those mistakes. Yeah. You know? And I and I think um, the few bands that we keep mentioning are really professional that way. You know, definitely. You know, they'll, they'll bring the professional. Lads, yeah. they, they they really know their stuff. Mm. You know, there's there's no sort of everything they do holds water. Yeah. You know, whether you like the music or not, you have yeah. to respect yeah. how professional they are. Yeah. There's a band from England called Hundred Year Old Man actually who are coming over in in August and were over previously. I saw them in the siege. Yeah. Savage. And, like. 
I had them over for a couple of days in my in my gaff and the couple of gigs that they mm. played and watching them set up even it was just brilliant. They were just so professional. So yeah. There's no fucking around, no nothing. Yeah. It was just everything was just presented out. Yeah. Done. Solid set for forty minutes, bang, everything packed up, gone, done. And it was just great. Yeah. You know, it was a real kind of uh And they had the merch as well. And they had the merch as well and the just the, the attitude mm. to uh being something that people can invest in was really, really cool. Yeah. You know, they really put thought into to um making it easy for people to get on board with them. Yeah. Which, is, which is really interesting whereas a lot of Irish bands will just come along and say fuck what time are you on five minutes I will have another pint yeah I know yeah. <laughs> like, no no go get fucking yeah. ready like you know yeah 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 um, but um, we leave it on a positive note as well by saying that like we're all delighted that you're recording um, it's good to hear that it's, that it's at Christmas time um, I'm sure. That, I'm sure it might. Um, it might. May, it might be sooner. I don't know. It's put it hard your, to say. Put in your Santa list. It could <laughs> be sooner. I don't need you know. But uh, yeah. I'm, I'm making a conservative estimate. Okay. Uh, I would yeah. probably say January. Right. 2020. Okay. That's what you're looking at. Um, have you any other shout outs? Um, obviously the three lads aren't there, but uh, we miss them. Oh yeah, we miss them. Miss them loads. They're um, they're at home slaying. I'd say Keen <laughs> is hung over. Nice one, Keen for the siege. <laughs> Keen was on a mission for the for the siege. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, great guy. He, yeah. Tre- he threatened to uh, ejaculate all over a pizzeria in uh, Galway <laughs> on the Friday, and there was no one going to stop him. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm actually not going to edit that out. Sorry, Keen. You deserve it. <laughs> uh, where can we find Partalon on social media then? So we're on Bandcamp, Spotify, uh, Facebook. We don't have an Instagram. Um, that might change in time. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to do it. Twitter. Okay. Uh, YouTube, the usual few few searches. You'll have find you us. have you? Um, it mightn't be a bad idea. Have you any kind of new merch coming through? F- we to keep you keep you in the spotlight. No t-shirts or anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> we do have t-shirts, and there's about twenty left. I'd say. Okay. So I'm I'm a big fan of not getting anything else until everything else is gone. Okay. Cool. So once those t-shirts are gone, then okay. we then we'll have a new. So you can stuff. get them through Bandcamp on the merch side. Get through Bandcamp. You can just contact us directly via email. Uh, Partalonian at gmail dot com or Facebook. Find us on Facebook. Um, we're very reasonable guys. We yes, yeah. <laughs> and the quality of the t-shirts are super as well. By the way, cheers! I saw you rocking it there, right? And uh, yeah. <laughs> myself and Stu. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a million for coming on board, Howard. Thank, thanks for having me. I didn't just, you know, from a personal point of view, it's great. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's only a chat, man. Setup. It's yeah. only a chat. That's all but it that's is. That's how you change the world. Is <laughs> you start with a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God. Um, you can find The Metal Cell on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, email me at themetalcell at gmail.com if you're a band. If you want to come on board and have a chat, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, shout outs also to uh, Trev at the Cranium Titanium Metal Show and Burning Metal Incorporated, uh, Dara from Invictus Productions, and Oleg in Kohora. Wish Partlan, nothing but the best, one of my favourite Cork bands, so it was, uh, so it was a delight to have um, Howard here. Thanks, so that's Richie. It. Over and out. Thanks. Thanks.